Good evening, America. Eight years ago, my father sat our family down. He spoke of a nation in decline, of dreams slipping away, of a future endangered by failed leadership and broken promises. It was in that moment I knew my father had made a decision that would forever change our lives. We realized he had chosen to step into the arena to fight for the soul of America. He decided to leave behind the comforts of an unbelievable business empire, to leave behind everything he had ever built, to answer the call to serve our nation. Unlike his predecessor, it was not a decision born out of necessity. Unlike the current president, it was not a decision that would enrich his family. Rather, it was a decision made out of love for this country and a deep concern for America's future. My father was clear it would not be easy, that there would be a huge price to pay, and that the attacks would be vicious. Looking back, that was an understatement. The made-up Russia hoax, the sham impeachments, the efforts to destroy an unbelievable company, a company that I run today, the efforts to cancel us, to silence him, to gag his free speech, and to drag him through every radical left courthouse in America, to take his life. Yet through it all, he's shown unwavering courage and determination, not just in public, but in every private conversation with me and our family. He stood tall, fueled not by personal ambition, but by a profound love for this country and a love for all of you, the American people. That man is my father. That man is the 45th president and soon to be 47th president of the United States. That man is Donald J. Trump. Each time I've stood on this stage, America has been at dire crossroads. In 2016, many people began to doubt the promise of America. Our economy was struggling. Jobs were scarce. Our standing on the world stage was weak at best. Veterans were forgotten. Our military was in shambles. Our educational system was broken, ranked 30th in the world. He could no longer tolerate an inept administration they handed $150 billion to Iran, a country that chanced death to America, or witnessed the continued attacks on our Constitution and our religious liberty, or see the disrespect shown to our unbelievable law enforcement officers who are being disarmed, defunded, and persecuted each and every day. He could no longer stand to see words like Christmas stripped from public use or the Pledge of Allegiance removed from our schools. But my father saw potential where others saw despair. Donald Trump built the New York City skyline. He did so during a time, he did so during a time when businesses were turning away from the city he loved. Crime was rampant, the streets were dirty, but he had the Midas touch, and he turned those streets and neighborhoods into gold. He faced every challenge with tremendous vision and grit. As he did during the 2016 election, he rolled up his sleeves. He remained unapologetic. He did not care to be politically correct. He restored hope. He restored a voice to millions of Americans who had been ignored. 
He restored the American dream. Under my father's leadership, the economy climbed to record heights. Jobs were created at an unthinkable pace. Unemployment reached historic lows across all demographics. Wage growth soared. He cut taxes for hardworking families and businesses. He slashed regulations. We saw the greatest 401k increase in American history. People bought their first homes in an environment that saw 2 to 3 percent interest rates. They started their families. My father made the United States energy independent with the lowest gas prices in decades. My father made the United States safe. Our borders were closed. There was peace in the Middle East. Soleimani, al-Baghdadi, the terrorists were dead. My father made the United States respected again with the courage to walk into countries like North Korea, with the courage to impose tariffs on China, and with the courage to tear up trade deals that cost Americans their jobs. He brought manufacturing back to America. Small businesses flourished. He did what he promised. He put America first. We were winning. Donald Trump made America great again. But he also created a movement, a movement that threatened the special interests in the political elites, a movement that cast a bright light on the institutions weaponized against the American people. You see it in our schools. God bless the moms who fought back. You see it in your workplace. You see it on every news station, in every newspaper. You see it in the military. The most iconic military installations on planet Earth are stripped of their identity and renamed. Fort Bragg, Benning, Fort Hood. You see it in Hollywood. You see it in our two-tier judicial system. They don't even hide it anymore. My father has been censored. The former president ripped off to Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook while terrorist organizations remain intact. My father has been persecuted, targeted by far-left Democrats, funded by special interest groups, and hand-picked judges. My father has been pulled off the ballots of states, radical justices attempting to defy the will of millions of Americans who adore who he is and what he stands for. My father even became the target of an assassin who almost killed America's single greatest hope for our future. The swamp is terrified of this incredible moment, movement. They're terrified of it. They're terrified of you and the tens of millions of people watching us on TV right now. They've tried everything to keep him from you, everything, to destroy his legacy, to destroy his family. They have failed, and they will not win. I love my Florida delegation right here. Thank you. My father stands before you with the most votes of any Republican candidate in the history of our nation. He has defied the predictions of every political pundit. He fills stadiums across our country. He energizes Americans to the issues facing this nation and does so with unvarnished honesty. He is not a threat to democracy. He is a threat to those who despise our republic, many of whom are bought and sold, bribed and coerced, people who have never signed the front of a check and who have been dependent on the government their entire adult lives.
Today, as it was in 2016, America is at that crossroads again. Energy prices are soaring. Interest rates are crippling. Everything is unaffordable. The U.S. dollar has been diminished. Inflation has made it impossible for Americans to live, to save for their future. Our infrastructure is crumbling. Our border is out of control. Millions are dead and displaced in Russia and Ukraine, a war that has no end and a war that we are funding. The Middle East has become a hornet's nest. Our greatest ally, Israel, totally under siege. Fentanyl is killing our youth and destroying families while the current administration stands idly by, hoping their inaction will import illegal votes. Crime terrorizes our cities and our suburbs as far-left policies handcuff police. Male athletes, guys my height, six foot five, are swimming in women's sports. Destroying the dreams of young girls who have trained every minute of their lives. We no longer trust our elections. We no longer trust our judicial system. And we no longer believe that our government is working in our best interest. In spite of where we are today as a nation, I'd like to speak to every American. To the homeless veteran sleeping under a bridge as illegal immigrants are housed in the most expensive hotels in New York. I'm sorry. We know it's wrong, and we will fix it. To the single mother who can no longer afford her rent, afford groceries, and has been forced to work three jobs, I'm sorry, it does not have to be this way. To the parents who lost a son or daughter to fentanyl, including the incredible woman that spoke the other night, while an administration does absolutely nothing, I'm sorry, your government can do so much better, and it will. To the children who are being brainwashed instead of learning the fundamentals of school, I'm sorry, there are teachers who care and my father will empower them. <laughs> to the law enforcement officers, our brave board patrol, secret service agents who work every single day to protect our communities, knowing damn well that the system will throw you under the bus, I'm sorry. We will stand behind you. <laughs> to commuters often petrified to take a bus, take a train, or walk the streets in cities across our nation, I'm sorry, that man right there will fix this. To the construction workers, to the middle class families, to the families with children with disabilities, families who can no longer afford medical benefits or to take a vacation, I'm sorry, we will make America great again. And to my father, who has been ruthlessly silenced slandered, and attacked by a corrupt administration, I'm sorry. We know, and America knows, that they're not just after you, they're after all of us, and you just have to be standing in their way. To all Americans watching tonight, the greatest retribution will be our success. Success not just for ourselves, but for our grandchildren and our children. Under President Donald J. Trump, the swamp will be drained. America will be respected. Our cities will be safe. Our streets will be clean. And our border will once again be secure.
We will have peace. We will have prosperity. Your hard-earned tax dollars will enrich a better America, not be squandered in corrupt foreign nations. Education will be handed back to the states. We will no longer be 30th in the world. We will be first. Our children will understand family, our children will have values, and our children will love God. Our country will prioritize free speech, respect freedom of religion, and honor our Constitution. As his son, I've never been more proud of a person in my life. A man who has defied all odds more than once. A man who believed in the promise of America when others turned away. A man who saw a nation in need of a champion and answered that call with unwavering determination and courage. A man who survived a bullet that was intended to eliminate him permanently from our future and from our family. Never have I been more proud to be a Trump. Never have I been more proud to stand by my father's side. I remain incredibly honored to be part of this journey, a journey with all of you, a journey to save the greatest country on earth, a journey with the most incredible people I have ever met. Dad, five days ago, Laura, Luke, Carolina, and I held our breath as we saw blood pour across your face. By the grace of God, divine intervention, and your guardian angels above, you survived. You are the greatest fighter I have ever seen. You are strong, you are full of life, and you are unapologetic. Your optimism is contagious. Your backbone is unbreakable. Your conviction to fight for what is right and against all that is wrong is truly next level. The whole world saw your strength as you stood up, you wiped the blood off your, your face, and you put your fist in the air in a moment that will be remembered as one of the most courageous acts in the history of American politics. You shouted, fight, fight, fight! I'm honored to be your son. I'm honored to speak to our great nation tonight. You are a true leader. You epitomize strength. Our country loves you. Our country appreciates you. Our country misses you. And on November 5th, our country will re-elect you as the 47th President of the United States of America. 
Good night, Milwaukee.